Hello and welcome to the Midweek Move, where we examine the scriptures line by line, verse by verse, ask ourselves, what does this actually mean? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be continuing our series that we started last week, where we're examining what some call the fivefold ministry, pastor, prophet, uh, evangelist, teacher, and apostle. And with this conversation, we talked about last week how uh, perhaps these things are more of a gifting rather than an actual position in the church itself. And what does that look like when somebody's operating in the pastoral gifting? And last week, Pastor Scott gave us some really interesting action steps if you feel like some of these giftings are active in your life. And he challenged us to simply listen. Listen more than we speak. And in fact, he challenged us to reach out to somebody who perhaps is going through some things, who's struggling, and to listen to their story. We want to hear from you guys. What does that look like? How did this play out in your personal life this past week? Reach out to us at mediahub at thbstreetport.com, or you can find us on Facebook, Midweek Move, and uh, just send us a message. We want to praise God with you. We want to celebrate what God has done in your life. At the same time, we want to answer some questions you may have about the process. That being said, today's conversation, we're going to be continuing on by talking about the giftings of a teacher. What is the teacher gifting? How does it look like? What is, how does that play out in our lives on a day-to-day basis? So I want to encourage you guys, grab a notebook, take some notes, because what Pastor Scott and Pastor Doug have for you guys today is going to be challenging and invaluable, maybe even adjusting your idea of how things look for the teacher. So let's jump into it. So, pastor-centric, probably the second gift that we would say in the westernized church would be teacher. Yes. Right? So, teacher, because, you know, you got Sunday school. Yeah. You got to have teachers, right? Yes. We, we got nurseries. Hey, we got to have teachers. Back in the day, it was the old right. felt boards, you know, and we were putting <laughs> Noah and Moses on the yeah. boards, you know, and the little cutouts, and they're teaching. Right. So, Teaching could seem like it's an easy definition, but mm-hmm. dig a little bit deeper in that teacher. What does that gift really bring out? How is that gift truly used? What are some characteristics of that? Well, teachers, in, in a lot of scenarios, they, they're at odds with the pastor and the prophetic anointing. <laughs> and the reason is, you know, prophetic, we get a lot of revelation, things that are not necessarily proven but revealed. And they can't find it <laughs> written line upon line, so to speak. And the pastor sometimes will go to the, the side where he errors because he's looking at um, someone's uh, heart or character. <laughs> and right. So he's given exceptions at times. But teachers will take it right down the middle and give you what the word says, break it down and give you the whys, you know, why you should be this way, why this is out of error, in error, or why you shouldn't at this, maybe at this point, you shouldn't use a revelation, you should use what the word says. They have an ability to break it down, to give you context, to give you application. Uh, the teacher anointing is, is very um different because a lot of times it is not very relational. A lot of the teachers aren't relational. Right. <laughs> they just want to give you the information and make sure that you understand it for the assignment. But it, it's a great gift and, and we need the teacher. Without the teacher, you know, we'd be out of balance. We'd be out of balance because a lot of times, even, you know, we were to judge prophecy. Well, who judges prophecy? Right. A lot of times the teacher that comes back and asks balance, says, you're right about this word. That's good. But apply this to the word. You missed this when you, when you were given it word, you know? So I, I like the teacher anointing. Um, when my first ministry gift, when I started off in, in the ministry, it was teacher. You yeah. know, I, I was able to take the word, break it down, and give you facts, a lot of facts. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't very relational. I I, I um, transitioned into a more relational pastor type scenario before I even became prophetic. But that's my my assessment of the teacher is is the truth broken down to give you context for everything else that goes on. Teachers add context to the other things that we seek throughout the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that biblically, when we talk about teachers, I think some of the greatest teachers in the Word of God that we see were relational. Yeah. And the greatest teacher of all mankind. Oh, yes. If you look at how many questions he was asked yes. in the Gospels, right. Jesus it's hundreds. I, I just saw the, the number. I can't remember it, and I don't want to be hyperbolic and just put some big number out there. But it's a lot 
A lot of questions in the Gospels Jesus was asked. Right. The number that he answered was put at like eight. <laughs> really? So he's asked all these questions, and he gives eight answers. Really? Yet he asks this many questions. And this many questions was multiplied greater than the answers he gave because (laughs) he was always leading somebody to the answer. Yeah. He wasn't giving them the answer other than I am the way, the truth and the life. Right. Like when it came to that absolute, it was back to him. Everything was back to him, but how they got there at times, his teaching led them somewhere. And I think the greatest teachers are not people who are disseminating information and regurgitate, regurgitating Mm -hmm. it to us. It's people who they know where to go. Yeah. They don't take us there. Yes. They lead us there. That's really good. Some of the greatest teachers don't lead with their mouth. They lead with their ears. Right. That's, that's really good. That's because really good. The, the true Holy Spirit gift of teaching knows how to take in what they're hearing, mm-hmm. filter it through their gift, teaching gift, yeah. and then bring it out that leads people to the to the desired result. Yes. And I think a lot of people think the teaching gift is I'm going to teach for an hour, nobody's going to say anything and everybody's yeah. going to know the answer when they walk out. And right. to me, I don't think that's the biblical definition of teaching. Yes. I think the biblical uh, definition of teaching is taking people on a journey where they get to the desired result. Right, right. Because then it is relational. That's exactly right. Then you are building. Then it is experiential too because the way that we learn mm-hmm. is not just through encounter. Yeah. Like we encounter God and that changes us. Right. But if we're not experiencing Jesus every day, we won't be transformed. Yes. Like the encounter with God, it shifts everything and it opens us up to a whole new world. Mm -hmm. But now we've got to experience Jesus every day to walk in that transformation. And I think teachers help us do that. Teachers should help us maybe not encounter God, but they should help us to encounter experience Jesus yeah. on a journey. And that's why Jesus was one of the greatest teachers, the greatest teacher right. of all, because a lot of times he didn't just say this. Yeah. Right. He said, well, what about this? Yes. Like Peter's going, hey, this person said this and this, but who do you say that I am? Right. And he didn't even tell him, hey, I'm the resurrection of life. You're going to believe in me. He's like, no, no, no. Who right. do you say? He's bringing him to a place of decision. Yes. So that he can decide to experience Jesus as the Son of God. That's so cool. That's so cool. So you know, uh, I think a, a big obstacle to the the uh, ministry, the gift of the, the teacher, is because we'll use a secular model to try to bring that to the church. Yep. <laughs> and so that's where we get in error. So we, we use the university, we use yes. the public school, right. we use all of that kind of that template, and that's the really not the biblical model of teaching. Right. Even with the Apostle Paul. A lot of things that he's telling them is is coming in letter form, but it's coming through things he's heard. Right. Like just in Col- uh, Colossae, yeah. how did he know what to write to them? Yeah. Epaphras had told him, and Paul sends Epaphras. Epaphras was the one who reached the people for uh, who preached the gospel in Colossae. Yes. And and so Paul hears it from Epaphras, takes it in yeah. through the Holy Spirit. And then writes this amazing letter right. to the church at Colossae, of which we know as Colossians. Right. And in that is warning, encouragement, exhortation, yes. like uh, 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 correcting right. uh, heretical teachings. All of that is in that letter. Yeah. And yes, he's an apostle, but he's teaching. He's teaching, sure. And he's doing it in a way that's leading them to Jesus. Yeah. It's all leading to Jesus. So I... One of my dominant gifts is teaching, yes, which doesn't quite balance out with what my dominant gift is. <laughs> yeah, right. In people's minds, it doesn't. Yeah. But I am an expository, line by line context. I want to know where they at, who's talking, who's being talked to, what's going on here. I'm not going to pull one verse out and just try to make it something. Right. Like my mind goes to that boom, 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 boom. That's that teaching gift. Yes. I have that, but. I had to learn that it wasn't just an hour of talking, okay. but lead people somewhere yeah. and then let them make a decision in the answer. Yes. That's when they can encounter God. That's when they can experience Jesus for real. That's good. And it's not just an intellectual knowledge of Jesus. Now it's an experiential knowledge of Jesus. Right. 
So really, basically, teachers are light givers in the kingdom. They, they bring things to light. Um, I would say that even teachers are anointed to bring truth uh, to situations. And we hear that word teacher and we can think in the natural realm, earthly realm, and teachers are super important in the earthly realm, but they're even more important in the kingdom. Because what happens is when you sit under a gifted teacher in the kingdom, you kind of leave saying, I've never understood this before. It finally makes sense. It's that aha moment. Teachers help us to get to that aha moment, that light bulb. It's like maybe we saw it and maybe we learned a little bit from it. But when a teacher is truly anointed to break something down and open it up to us, that leaves us with that moment of going, oh, that's what it is. Not because of their phenomenal, you know, ability. It's because God used that, that gift to then reveal and give us understanding. Paul talks about it a lot, about the eyes, you know, of your understanding being open, you know, that you would understand this, that you would know this, that, and then all those things he was teaching, he was using that gift of, uh, of a teacher. And so when we talk about this gift of teaching, what we, what we fail to realize is that when, when that gift of a teacher looks around, that, that gift is saying, you know what, every person can learn this truth. Every single person. You know, sometimes with the other gifts, it, it's kind of, you kind of cherry pick who can get it and who can't. But with the gift of, of the teaching gift, it's like, no, 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 everyone can get this. When that gift is truly functioning, no matter how shallow somebody is in the room or how deep somebody is in the room, everyone learns something. And though that is the greatest teaching gift is when is when that person that has the gift of a teacher can come into a room and people can be in the shallow end and the deep end. But everybody walks away going, wow, OK, I get it now. I get it. Like everybody gets it. Right. And so I think sometimes we think that the teaching gift, we, we relegate it to it can only be this or it can only be this or it's only for these people to go deeper. But the greatest people functioning in the teaching gift are those that no matter who's in the room, everyone can learn. And here's the greatest thing about the, the people who are anointed and have a teaching gift, and maybe it's their dominant gift, is that they're learning as they're teaching. Like, to me, the greatest responsibility of having a gift is not just using it, but you growing from it as well. And I think sometimes we miss that. It's like we have a gift and I've got to give that gift out and people can grow and mature, just like we've been talking about the five gifts that Jesus gave the church to help us all grow and mature. But sometimes we forget we're a part of that body. We need to be growing and maturing as well. And I think one of the greatest lessons that we can learn you know, even in this teaching gift, if, if you've got a gift of a teacher, and maybe you don't even think you do, maybe you're like, man, I wish I could do that. But you have an ability, like you have an ability, you have a curiosity. Yeah, every teacher is curious. They, they've got to go deeper. You know, every, every teacher is a learner. Um, they're able to break things down, maybe super complex things, but break it down where everybody can understand it. Maybe that's you. Um, a, a, a teacher that has a, a teaching gift, everyone can understand the Bible. How many times have we talked to somebody and they've been like, ah, I just can't understand that. I don't understand that. A, a, a teacher with a teaching gift, everyone can know how to apply the Word of God to their life, right? And every great teacher always leads you to an action step. That teaching gift is always leading you, not just to knowledge, but to understanding of how you can now function in that because ultimately teachers never waste what they've gone through and they always allow what they've gone through to lead others in a path that teaches them that they can know and understand. So here's your action step, teaching gift or not. I believe all of us can function in different seasons of teaching, even just life lessons to people. But this week, what I'd like you to do on the midweek move, for an action step, a move, making a move. Take one lesson that you've learned, just one, one lesson that you've learned over your lifetime. Take that lesson, break it down, and share it with someone in some way. Whether it's something that you post on social media, whether it's a text message to somebody, maybe it's a phone call, uh, whatever that is, I want you 
to, to, to use a gift. And here's what I want you to do. Before you do it, just say, Lord, I want to be able to, to help people know and understand. Like, I'd really love to just function in the gift of being able to teach somebody something. And here's what I've learned. So, Lord, help me to convey that to somebody. So there you go. There's your midweek move in the gift of teaching. Something you've learned. One thing that you've learned. Break it down and share it with someone. Share it with someone or share it with everyone on your social media platform. But take that action step and simply say, Lord, use what I've gone through to teach somebody something. I'd love to be able to use this gift in my life in some way. All right. Awesome. That's our action step. That's our midweek move. And until next time, I will see you later.